Hey everyone, thanks for joining us again. Today we're here to talk about the computer vision pipeline and some of the steps that are included to take uh, a batch of images and result in a trained model. Um, so Joseph, go ahead and start us off with what, what the first step might be. Yeah, I mean, so when we talk about the computer vision pipeline, uh, you gotta think about each of the component parts. Um, you have to think about, first and foremost, what problem you wanna solve, which it's pretty easy to skip that step and just think about, oh, I have a bunch of images or I have a bunch of videos, but what problem specifically is it you wanna solve? Do you wanna monitor the presence of something? Do you wanna look for package theft? Do you wanna count the presence of something, like counting the number of cells that ran an experiment or identifying weeds from like aerial imagery so that you can more targeted de deploy herbicides and things like this? Um, but think very specifically, not necessarily narrowly, but really specifically in defining your problem. And then from there, I mean, the steps that you follow are pretty common. Collecting your images, getting them, identifying which ones should be sent for labeling, um, labeling your data, uh, pre-processing your images. So standard things that you need to do like resizing or maybe increasing contrast, augmenting your data to increase your data set size, representation, and improve your model's ability to generalize. Train a model, uh, which also involves a little bit of model selection, um, and then check out the in inference and see how it does in a given test set, deploy that model, and then continue to monitor its, its uh, performance over time. And especially key at that step is continuing to collect image or video data from your inference conditions so that you can continue the process all over again. Yeah, that, that, that seems like a pretty good summary. I, I definitely think it's, you know, each one of those steps is uh, kind of, complex and there's there's a lot involved so maybe um, now that we've kind of summarized the whole pipeline maybe we can dive in a little bit into each component part um, which do you think is the hardest like if you <laughs> you're yeah. like you're going about building your model which step do you think causes the biggest hurdle yeah so so that's actually a good question and um, I, I think you know anyone who goes through this process is going to feel like one of those steps is harder for them and you know this is just my unique point of view but um, I would say the hardest part for me is actually uh, the deployment of a model. So that's the step after, after you've determined, you know, through tests and through, uh, through different metrics that the model's actually gonna be good enough to do what you want it to do. Uh, but then you actually need to bring it onto a device or onto a server uh, to be able to uh, make those inferences continuously. So that, that's the hardest part um, from my point of view, but what do you think? I know about that necessarily that it's the hardest, but I think like, the most overlooked, or at least like the biggest area for improvement and growth in vision, and probably machine learning more generally, is that computer vision is, you know, it's only so much about actually the code that you write, or only so much about the model that you select, and it's all about the data that you use. And it's kind of remarkable, right? When you're debugging model performance, understanding why you're getting the inferences you are, or the quality of performance that you are, is entirely about the data that you're training on. And so it's amazing that we have such little emphasis on, I think even today, in our tooling and our understanding of what data are we collecting? What data are we sending for labeling? Do we have balanced classes? Do we have augmentations that represent the inference conditions? Uh, and basically making this be an ongoing, iterative, improved process. So one of my biggest tips as a result of that is you know, you're never going to have a perfect model. That's, you know, it's a, it's a trope at this point. But people don't internalize that. That means that, like, usually the highest leverage thing you can do is get an initial model to production that solves one part of the problem. It doesn't have to be perfect, but identifies one class that you ultimately want to do many, many more classes. And then make it really easy to collect additional data and create safeguards and fail-safes, I should say for when the model doesn't produce an inference that you want. If you do those things, get a model quickly to production and put in fail safes for if the model is incorrect and collect additional data, your performance is gonna cascade and improve on a much faster iterative basis than thinking that you need to have every class or perfect model or a thousand inferences a second or something like this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely, the scoping in the very beginning is extremely important to be able to actually get these things to work and actually deploy them. Uh, all the way through the production. So I definitely I definitely agree with that. Yeah. What have been some of the, like, I don't know, 
maybe unintuitive or tips and tricks or hacks that you've picked up along the way as you've taken a, a problem and then broken it down into these steps? Like, what are things to watch out for? What's like a quick tip that your fifth time self would have told your fifth first time self or your hundredth self would tell your first time self? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I mean, certainly the thing you've already been talking about um, with uh, narrowing the scope to something that is definitely going to be achievable. Um, but I think uh, another just sort of general fact about uh, the whole pipeline that I think um, often ends up being the case is um, people will spend a lot of time gathering uh, a data set um, that they believe is entirely representative of the problem that they're going to tackle. Um, they do a lot of work to improve their model on this data set, choosing models, making data augmentations, and going through that part of the pipeline um, that you were that you were discussing to, to get to a really good model. But then they take it out and put it into reality and realize that uh, the reality of the deployment situation wasn't exactly what they had um, when they initially gathered the, the data set. So being very careful and very real with the end state that you want it to be in, um, I think is very important because otherwise you'll spend a lot of work optimizing something that isn't exactly uh, what you wanted in the beginning. Um, so uh, you can use other data sets to kind of uh, get quick, uh, you know, like some quick progress and start to make a model out of things, but um, there's no, no sacrifice for directly collecting images from the exact state um, that you want to be ending up in. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. Makes a lot of sense. Um, why RoboFlow? <laughs> why does RoboFlow make this process easier? Or why would yeah. you want to use that yeah. tool? Yeah, I mean, so I think one of the, I mean, so we've, we've kind of been talking about these different pieces of this pipeline in uh, abstraction, you know, but at the end of the day, each one of these pieces um, has a variety of different implementations and there's a variety of different uh, services that are out there to be able to handle each one of these things for you. Um, the best part about RoboFlow is that it kind of sits there in the middle and you're able to actually integrate all these pieces together so you can move quickly throughout the process and experiment with different pieces without having to go back and rebuild everything. Um, and so that's, that's primarily through data integration. Um, but then beyond that, um, you can kind of use RoboFlow as a source of record as you're moving through the process to know that, okay, once I got from here to here, I was at this state and here's what my data set looked like. And as Joseph was elaborating on, it's really all about the data set um, and to use that as kind of a central locus as you're, you're working through the process. Yeah, yeah, I mean, one thing we really care a lot about is interoperability and allowing the best tool to be used at each component part of the process. So collect your images from any given security camera, Raspberry Pi, video camera, whatever it is, label them wherever you'd want to label them, maybe use outsource labeling, bring them in, inspect, understand, try out a bunch of different image and model formats, convert to various places. Um, but yeah, we, we think a lot about how do we accelerate people's workflows and really be the tool to empower a whole generation of applications and developers that are going to build and are building our future of understanding the real world around us. Um, and so when it comes to computer vision pipelines and machine learning pipelines more generally, I think the, the key takeaways are really get something working, make it easy to improve, and continue to focus on your data. Um, you follow those, those key quick tips and you can pretty quickly start have industry leading applications. It's a wide open field. Well, that was a lot in one one fireside chat, wouldn't you say? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Thank you, thank you all for joining. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe for additional RoboFlow content, and as always, happy model building. Good luck. See you in the comments.